So um, my guests are here. Let's begin uh, with Desago, who is here with me in studio. Desago, thanks for making the time for us today. You are doing what you do online and on YouTube. Um, you've gotten that um, golden button, and Dorothy Oko is here. She'll be telling us about that. You have over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. What are you doing with them? What is it that you do online? And why do you think uh, it has gotten you to the point where you are making money? Uh, first, thank you so much for hosting me here. Nice table, though there is no glass of water, I'm a <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it will come. COVID manenos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been lucky and maybe be God's favor to have that large audience online. Right now, I think um, I have uh, over 440 K subscribers. That's an increase from 100K uh, from last year around April. So there has been an increase. So what we generally do, we entertain them, and we try to get uh, promoters to come and endorse us so that when I'm creating content, I'm able to incorporate them inside. And then as I'm doing my comedy, I'm able to pass a message or to influence people to purchase certain goods. So I have various clients that I've worked with over years and more coming. So we, I just try to create content. Some is just pure comedy, and the other one I incorporate client. So that's basically what we do, online marketing and entertainment. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you talked about an increase in about, what, 100,000 subscribers for, since last year to this year. Well, somebody else, another guest of mine who's had uh, a huge increase in her followership is Aziad. Um, if um, you don't know who she is, you probably don't have WhatsApp, you're not on Facebook, I'm not on TikTok, but I am on Instagram. Aziad had 36,000 followers last year. It's seven months ago. And she moved from 36,000 followers to over 800,000 in seven months alone. Aziad, you join me now. What do you attribute this growth of your followers to? Is it COVID or is it that famous song that you danced to? Tell us about this and, and, and what your journey in content creation has been. Okay, thank you so much for hosting me today, Yvonne. I can say it, it has been both because previously before COVID, not a lot of people knew me, but I was known to some people because I was still working on my craft. I started my content creation in 2017 when I finished my Form 4 in December. And then I wasn't serious about it. I was just posting things on Instagram and a little bit of Facebook and also YouTube. But then this year after the hit song that I did, the numbers escalated on my social media platforms because on Instagram I had 36,000 followers and right now I have 830. And for my TikTok I had 100,000. Right now I'm at 700,000. For my YouTube I was at 2,000. <laughs> right now I'm at 80,000. So I can say also just the hard work and also God's luck because they matched together. And Ab absolutely. So all of this jump in followers obviously means that you've got a lot of clients who are knocking at your door, wanting you to work with them um, in various campaigns. Um, you say you started doing this right after leaving high school. How have you managed to make this uh, a business for you? Like, you know, what is it you're doing? How have you put, set up a business around yourself? Do you have a management company? How does that work? Um, it works for me because immediately after I finished my Form 4, when I started my theater called Hearts of Art, I met my manager, Peter Kawa. And immediately he saw talent in me and he was like, I need to start managing you because I see potential in you. So that is when I got my management from 2017. So in 2018, I did some films and also continued with theater. But you see, I grew with them. So by the time that this fame was hitting and I was getting all that attention, I had a management that, that could help me to deal with things also professionally and business wisely. And that's important, would you say? It is very, very important for influencers, for, for influencers, for each and every single person who's out there who wants to do social media stuff or even TV or even radio to have a management team. Because at the end of the day, there are these moments that you want to do things, but you're not able to multitask because you have right. videos to complete for clients. Right. And at the end of the day, you need to respond to emails, you need to pick up calls, you need to go to meetings. You can't do that on your, by your own. So you need someone. And having a management doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be someone who's professional. Mm -hmm. It might be your family member who you trust, your friend, someone who's older than you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. We'll come back and talk about, you know, the monetizing bit. And I know, um, as yeah, there was, there was a huge controversy about what your rate card is like. And people were like, excuse me, what? Uh, you're still 19 or did you turn 20? I turned 20 in June. Okay. So for the record, I feel old on this show. I think I'm older by 
twice over the, everyone else on this show, but it is fine. Maybe Kate actress is a little closer to, to, <laughs> to my age. Let me hope. Kate um, uh, is uh, someone who actually started out, I believe, in acting. Um, if many of you remember, she was on, uh, on, on, on the show on Citizen Television, mother-in-law, and has then gone on to become uh, you know, an online sensation and doing uh, quite a few things with clients online. Kate Tress joins me now uh, to talk about that. Kate, uh, what's your journey been like and specifically about making money out of what you do? It's turning a talent into monetizing. What's that journey been like? <laughs> Okay, um, I think I started out as fun. It was fun. Um, I got inspiration from my friend Jugush, and uh, I admired what he was, he was doing. And I thought, you know what? Maybe he can do it my way. Well, not his way, but I got inspired. And I started putting out videos for fun. And I remember my first client was Showmax, and they were they told me, you know, we want you to create videos for us. And I was like, how do you start? How do you charge? And I would like to say and to thank Jugush because he had started earlier than me, so he was able to guide me. But I was careful not to, you know, <laughs> overconfident. And I started out small, little monies here and there. And I remember I did my first few Showmax videos, and they blew up. And I was like, okay, I can make money out of fun because for me, social media was fun and just being able to interact with my fans which I thought it was amazing. I got feedback ASAP and I thought that was an amazing thing. I didn't know I could fully depend on it like I do now. So that, that, that's how I started. And, and talking about a rate card, how do you decide how to price uh, you know, the services that you provide? Oh, okay, like I said, when I started out, I started out very humbly because um, you get into it, when you get into it for the money, you will not make the money. So the first thing that should be in your mind is deliver. I think I over deliver. <laughs> so the client comes back and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. and I saw the, the whole hula baloo around Aziad's rate card and I was like, they should see mine because I don't play because there's a lot of work that goes into content creation yeah. um, you're starting out you're hiring equipment you're hiring a producer a director there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and if you're not careful you end up not making money you're there pleasing people but you're not getting anything in return so I was very very careful I started humbly but I made sure that I delivered to keep my clients coming back and also referrals from clients also worked for me right and and uh, like you say it's uh, people don't understand the amount of work that goes into it so it's uh, conceptualizing uh, you know coming up with a concept shooting it and that shooting requires equipment that requires a, a number of staff and then there's also you know your followership and the engagement uh, you know you have an yeah. audience right so in essence you're mm -hmm. like a, an entire media house by yourself and that is something that True. you have to uh, sort of factor in mm -hmm. okay so yes yes carry mm -hmm. on kate no, no, that's true. That's, it's a whole media house and you're employing a whole, you have a fashion a fashion assistant, you have a makeup assistant, a hairdresser, you're a fashion house, you're a whole TV house. <laughs> I'm a small citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my boss will be happy to hear you say small citizen or else I'd have some eco competition happen. But yes, that is what people, um, I think, need to understand a little bit more uh, about that. And we'll be speaking with Dorothy in just a moment on the pricing, particularly with uh, those who are on YouTube. But then there's also Abel Mutua, uh, for whom, if you've not watched, basically, Abel, you sit down. You do many other things, yes. Um, but I think one of the things that you do, one of the products, is you're sitting down with a chair, microphone, and a camera in your face, and you're telling a story. So, Mkurugenza, did you ever think that would be something that would be popular enough to make money? And why do you think that has been so successful? I mean, you're just basically telling a story. One would imagine, you know, if I could do the same, I would just have a mic and a stool and be out somewhere in the middle of nowhere and tell a story, and that would be something that gains, uh, you know, some engagement and followership? Uh, well, to be honest, Yvonne, I, I did not know it would go this way. When I was doing it at first, I was just doing it for fun. That's, that's the honest truth. But now, after we did a couple of episodes, that's when we started re uh, noticing the traction that it was gathering. Then now we became very deliberate on how we were handling the channel. So one thing that I came to discover is that uh, if your content is educational, it's entertaining, and it's inspiring, it does not matter whether you are seated on top of a tree telling a story, it will go home. So that's one thing I came to discover, and I think that's the reason why 
the storytelling worked because all the stories that I have told on my channel are either inspiring, educational, or entertaining.